Hey guys, the new specification has core cool or required practicals in there. Um, a set of 12, well, 10 to 12 practicals that you have to do. Um, and these are going to be slightly tricky for you to advise for because they're not the sort of questions that we've had before. Um, so I'm going to leave you a few hints and tips on how you can advise your core practicals. So roughly 15% of the marks on your exam paper are going to be based on the practicals that you've done in class. And like I said, it's going to vary roughly between 10 and 12 practicals that you need to do. Um, so what sort of things do you need to learn and how are we going to answer these exam questions? Well, the first thing you need to learn, the obvious thing you need to learn, is how to do the practical. I am making as many, many practical videos as I can, putting them all up, nice playlist, sorting them all out for you, just showing you how to do the practicals. Because you probably had a chance to do this practical once, um, maybe it was a few years ago, maybe right at the beginning of the course, and now you've come to the exam time and you need to know how to do the practical. So, just a quick little video recap on how to do it. Things as well as how to do it you need to know are probably going to be things like how to risk assess the practical. So um, what things could hurt you, how could they hurt you and how can we avoid it hurting you. For example glass could hurt you, it could get broken, you can go and tell your teacher and they will tidy it up for you. Um, hot acid, any type of acid, um, things that are corrosive or harmful, go and wash your hands or wear gloves and always, always, always wear goggles. I know you hate doing it in class but please write it in your risk assessments. Any maths that came with the practical, for example um, titration calculations or calorimetry calculations, you're going to need to know how to do those. Those are really, really important. They could tie into a massive question altogether. And you're going to need to know your equations. And when we're looking at the equations, not only do they have to be balanced, but we're going to need to be thinking about the colours of things. So did a colour change happen? and the state symbols for things. For example, was it a solid and liquid? Did it turn into a gas? And then when we're thinking about colour changes or changing volume or gas being produced, is it an alternative way to do the practical? Maybe you measured um, loss of mass, could you have measured collection of gas or something like that? So a slight tweak in the practical that might make it better or worse or an alternative way to do it. Errors are going to be a big thing as well. So was there like a zero error or a percentage error that came up? Um, you're going to need to know the difference between the types of errors and um, maybe you might get given a picture and asked what type of error is this? or get given a picture saying where should they measure from and to or read this off. So your percentage uncertainties, you're reading things on um, like burettes or newton meters, um, so reading like scales and pieces of equipment, that's going to be really important. So make sure you know to measure from the bottom of the meniscus and make sure that you can do it to a reasonable degree of accuracy, that your resolution is good. And your resolution has to be the same the whole way through. So there you go guys, I am going to be doing loads and loads of practical videos like I said. Um, I'm going to do like loads and loads of things on all the different skills that you need. But this, when you're thinking about writing for your core practicals, um, required practicals, how they're going to come up in exams, these are the things that you need to be focusing on. If there's anything else I can do to help you, just let me know.